All right. Good evening from London. Just wanted to wish everyone a happy new year and welcome you to the first EFT webinar of 2018. Uh, I'm going to kick things off now. Um, we still have a few attendees coming through. But I guess first uh, order of business of the day is to say that the webinar is being recorded. So even those who are just arriving as I started speaking, uh, worry not, you'll have access to the recordings hopefully by tomorrow. So my name is Hallie Garner, uh, and I head up the research and digital content initiatives uh, at EFT. And what a better way to kick off the new year than with one of the most discussed concepts uh, of the last 12 months. Of course, that's blockchain. Um, it's just a buzzword, uh, some say. Um, what are some real examples of its use? Does it have the capacity to process the number of transactions in the supply chain? Uh, those are just a few of the questions that I've personally gotten in the last week or so on the topic. But fundamentally, does blockchain really have the potential to transform logistics? Well, today I'm going to be joined by Usha Krishnan. She's Global Black Belt Blockchain Architect for Microsoft, as well as Naval Sabarwal, who's Global Head of Supply Chain and Logistics Business Unit for Ramco, to discuss more. Um, given the subject matter, I can imagine that the audience is going to have tons of questions. So I encourage you to ask them. You'll be able to use the question, uh, log uh, the question form uh, on the GoToWebinar software to submit those. We've got about 15 minutes right at the very end of the presentations to cover those. Um, as I mentioned, the webinar is being recorded for those of you who are just joining us now. Um, and uh, you'll get copies hopefully by tomorrow, uh, if not early next week. And without further delay, um, I'm going to hand things over to Usha from Microsoft, who's going to jumpstart our conversation on blockchain. Uh, Usha, can I hand controls over to you? Go ahead, Haley. Thank you. Perfect. There we go. Hi. Good morning and good evening, depending on where you are. My name is Usha Krishnan. I am part of Microsoft's global black belt team working on blockchain technologies. What is blockchain? Blockchains are incredibly popular nowadays. But what is blockchain? How do they work? What problems does it solve? And what new questions and concerns does it bring along? Before we talk about blockchain, let's take a minute to reiterate a very important fact. In fact, I say this before I do anything else with blockchain. Blockchain is not a database. Let me repeat, blockchain is not a database because that is one of the mistakes most people do when you start thinking about a use case in blockchain. Let's make sure what it is not, and it is not a blockchain. So what is it? That is an interesting question that we will discuss today. Blockchain is a secure shared distributed ledger. That's a mouthful. Blockchain contains immutable cryptographically secure transactions that take place between untrusted, semi-trusted individuals, organizations, systems, and devices. Okay, that was heavier. Now let's break that down. In other words, a blockchain is a huge decentralized log of data. Just big data spread across numerous locations and we call them nodes. It secures the data through encrypted blocks accessed via peer-to-peer -peer network. You remember Napster, don't you? Let's examine the features that make blockchain a blockchain. We passionately call it pillars of blockchain. Blockchain is secure. Let's examine how encryption works, how security is implemented using encryption. Encryption is the process of taking a message, scrambling its contents so that only certain people can look at the message. Let's find a real world example. Let's go easy. Mailboxes. The mailbox is exposed to anyone who knows its location. That's how we get our mail. We say that the location of mailbox is completely public. Anyone who knows the address can go to the mailbox and drop a letter. However, only the owner of the mailbox has the key to open it and read the messages. It is a very simplistic way that we can explain how security works in blockchain. Next, let's talk about immutability. Blockchain is immutable. To understand immutability, let's take a closer look at a block. Each block contains one, some data. Of course, it needs to have data. 
two, fingerprint of the block, and we call it a hash, and three, hash of the previous block. When each block refers to the hash of the previous block, imagine what would happen when one of the blocks is modified maliciously or otherwise. All blocks that come after the modified block will be marked as not in the correct state. In other words, invalid. And that makes the blockchain immutable and increases the confidence that the data is also not manipulated after it was written to a blockchain. That brings us to the next pillars, shared blockchain, shared distributed ledger. Blockchain is a shared distributed ledger. Blockchain is simply something like an Excel spreadsheet. The difference being, instead of you having the only copy, everyone on the network has the same copy and they can add transactions to the same copy. Instead of having a central actor who decides who what goes into the ledger and what stays out, that's monopoly. Everyone on the network, and of course, depends on if it's a permission ledger, only the participants who have access to the transaction, you, they will all need to come and agree and get consensus before that becomes true and goes into a ledger. Some blockchains are Turing complete. That's an interesting word. Some blockchains like Ethereum can execute transactions based on programmable logic. The logic or program is actually called a smart contract, and that, that has become a buzzword of late. Smart contracts enable you to build logic into ledgers so that actions can be triggered, such as approvals or events like a share price even hitting a certain value. The above makes blockchain unique and useful for applications where those features are important. Now, Let's start thinking where it is going to be valuable. Let's see some scenarios which make blockchain a good candidate. For a blockchain project to be successful, of course, among many things, the applicability of blockchain for the chosen use case is extremely important. Let's examine the criteria which make a good use case for implementing on blockchain. I very passionately remember Gideon Greenspan avoiding the pointless blockchain project article, Bing it and make sure you read it at least once. Excellent read and it has stood the test of time. He goes in detail saying when and when not to use blockchain and we will review some of those at a very high level, let's say 300K foot level, um, feet level in the next few minutes. First and foremost, does your application's data control market, I am saying data control or not data sharing, needs to extend beyond a trust boundary. One of my other favorite authors, Anthony Lewis goes further to ask these questions. Are you looking at shared control of data rather than sharing of data? Will control of data by rules versus by power make a difference? That is a, that is a very nice question. Are you thinking enforcement of rules by participants? And now you can see why blockchain, right? Great questions and thoughts to ponder before we start looking at use cases that should go into blockchain. Consider currently how you transact. Are you introducing intermediaries to remove the trust issue between transacting parties? For example, are you using Kickstarter only because there are some rules of engagement that needs to be followed for investment in your startup? Hmm, my closed caption says wink wink. Okay, that's called an ICO. We will not talk about ICOs here, but I guess you see how they fall into a good use case for blockchain. Let's examine a few use cases. Does blockchain make sense for recording the furniture that you are picking up from a friend? I don't think so. Now let's say you are paying your friend money for the furniture and you do it once a month. Hmm, not a good case yet. I wish I could ask you this question and ask you for an answer, but I'm gonna say the answer here myself. What if you are using Bitcoin to pay your friend? I can actually hear you now. Yes, now we are in the game Bitcoin runs on blockchain. Now that you know the value of barter, you decide to barter your possessions and decide to do it among more than just your friends and need a way to transact without a central party like eBay, for example, peer-to-peer -peer transactions. Maybe that's a new blockchain app begging to be discovered or one that is already being coded right now. You get the idea, right? And that is how we think through the use cases for making a blockchain uh, application. So if it is that easy, 
what is the problem? Oh, this is an interesting, interesting slide. Uh, and this might, up, this actually does apply to a lot of other technologies, but in this case, blockchains too. High on our scale, <coughs> the white elephant in the room, multiple non-interoperable implementations and resulting fragmentations in blockchain. There are several solutions, but I'm in love with how Microsoft deals with it and we will discuss it shortly. And of course, there are several other market challenges that make blockchain a nightmare. I won't say nightmare, but certainly a difficult proposition today. It's immature. It disrupts a lot of practices. We want disruption and also don't want it. Depends on who you ask. Uh, and there are many others which include lack of clarity, uncertainty uh, around regulation, governance, questions around security and privacy of data. There are several more. There are many issues that are not in our control. And for those where there is a possibility of control or at least a mitigation of risk, we at Microsoft have some solutions for you. We will examine some of Microsoft's blockchain innovations in a minute. We at Microsoft do not believe that you need to cut your fingers to fit your glove. So we do not dictate the ledger that you should use, but support a multitude of ledgers. And they work seamlessly on Azure. Our platform has three layers. Let's go from the bottom here. The bottom layer is a multitude of enterprise ledgers that we support on Azure. The middle layer are our services, tools, and everything else that comes in between that makes a bridge for your application that allows for seamless integration with your custom and third-party apps. And of course, on the top comes your custom applications. It could be a mobile device, web interface, or could be your IoT devices. It could be any. We, we provide a way to integrate blockchain into any of your front-end interfaces. We at Microsoft pride ourselves in being a fully integrated platform. We do not believe that you can turn off your legacy infrastructure to get onto the blockchain bandwagon. We also do not believe that you will need to redesign all your other applications to be blockchain ready to leverage blockchain. Hence, we built very, very straightforward integrations. We even have fully configured operational reference architecture, including Azure Active Directory and that's, that's a big, big forest, key world, Internet of Things, we favoritely called it, call it IoT, Event Hub, Business Intelligence, and even document management systems. We strive to provide the best integrated products. In fact, we even have products in the marketplace to anchor documents to public blockchain. Interesting, why would you anchor a document into a public blockchain? We have several cool partners, and of course, like Adobe and DocuSign, there are reasons to do so. Now that we know we can support them all, or you know we can support them all, here is how we make it easy for you to start. We do not believe in one size fits all, and we spoke about it. We also do not believe that you need a nail just because the only thing we have is a hammer, like our competition does. Uh, you get it. We are all heavily invested in open source technologies and partnership. As evidenced on the slide, nearly one in three Azure machines are now running Linux and we support Linux as a first class citizen. Why is it important to Microsoft? Because we want to provide what is right for you and believe that your success is our success. We contribute to the open source community as well as build some of our services on open source technology like Cocoa Framework, we will talk about it soon. This also helps us to scale our customers' need as we rapidly release cloud solutions. You can rapidly provision your blockchain platform of your choice in Azure in seconds. You can do that right now. If you go to Microsoft Azure uh, Marketplace, and type in blockchain, you will see many dozens of templates and third-party products and solutions. A few clicks and your blockchain network, including complex consortium ledgers, can be stood up. In under five minutes, you have a fully configured ledger ready for you to start development. Huh. Now comes the interesting part. I have the same name at home, work, and most times on social media. 
Uh, I actually say most times because that's not always true, but let's leave that for a minute. So why would you have different identities on different technologies? That is where federated identity comes in. We can map your complex Ethereum hyperledger fabric and name it any other ledger identity with your social media logins, with your corporate logins, depending on how your use case, what your use case demands. The flexibility of using a single sign-on now just got extended to blockchain platforms of your choice. So where do we go from here? Zero to hero in a week. Huh, that sounds like an interesting uh, stand line. Okay, but that is true from napkin idea to proof of concept in seven days or less. That is what we let you do. We, uh, we make it happen for you. Blockchain applications are tough to build. They are often disconnected islands. Our task was to build a set of integrated services on our platform that allow you to connect the islands. We want you to test your blockchain ideation projects in the shortest time and expense. If your use case is not well suited for blockchain, and we spoke about it a few slides before, we will help you to fail fast and with the least expense. How does a two to four days sound for validating a proof of concept? ideation to POC and in less than a week. With full finish and polish, App Builder can help you proof of concept in less than a week. Prove beyond reasonable doubt that your project will succeed. If not, you can drop the project. Send me a note if you're interested and we will help your organization move ahead to become from zero to hero in less than a week. And now let's visit the giant white elephant in the room. We spoke about interoperability and standardization and what doesn't exist today. Enterprise smart contracts are here to your rescue. Smart contracts will evolve. And now let's, let's be a little futuristic and see where we would go. Smart contracts will evolve in the future to integrate with smart assets. What do I mean with that? In, let's take a scenario. A smart contract could be triggered to execute a payment when a physical asset is delivered to a location. Hmm, imagination now. I order a car and on delivery to my house, the payment is processed. That's interesting, but that cannot happen today or can with a lot of difficulty. Microsoft is building unique technology in the space to allow you to link your blockchain solution to existing technology investments. An example of this would be to integrate your blockchain with uh, your company's Active Directory, employees' digital identity, or even your IoT devices. Imagine the web of 90s. UA and logic were intertwined on page level. Database as an island to store data. This is where distributed ledger technology is today. Imagine a world where instead of logic residing in the ledger as smart contracts, you could have an intelligent middleware written in developer-friendly languages. I'm not saying Solidity or Go or anything else. I'm saying C Sharp and Java that can seamlessly integrate with your choice of blockchain, increasing productivity, scalability, and reuse. Enterprise smart contracts deliver a set of components that can be combined to create contract templates that when executed provides privacy, scale, performance, and management capabilities expected in this enterprise. This grows the ledger beyond its default capabilities out of the box. And to add to it, we are coming out with COCO framework, also called Azure Confidential Computing Framework. I've, I wish you, had, you could respond to this question and I would love to know the answer. Has any of you played with enterprise um, Azure SQL, the encrypted feature in Azure SQL? If you hadn't, you should give it a try. The geek in me says it's so cool. The data stays encrypted even while you do queries. It does not get decrypted until after it arrives at your machine. It is only when the driver, I, I mean the SQL driver, needs to give it to you, does it become decrypted. We are extending the same technology for distributed led <coughs> ledgers and blockchain. The data is protected inside a trusted execution environment, also known as an enclave. This ensures that the data, there is no way to view the data or operations inside 
from the outside, even with a debugger. They even ensure that only authorized code is permitted to access data, and that is how enterprise smart contracts and COCO can work together. If the code is altered or tampered, the operations are denied and the whole environment is disabled. This enforces the protections through the execution of code within it. And these are things that are by default not available in your ledgers today. We are now in the age of beyond encryption at rest and beyond encryption in transit. We have brought encryption of data while in use to the public cloud. This means that data can be processed in the cloud with the assurance that it is always under customer control, which is extremely important, especially in case of blockchain, which is out there in the open. Coco by default, Coco is not a ledger. It certainly is not a ledger, but it's a framework. It allows arbitrary ledgers, any of your ledgers, to integrate with it to achieve advanced cryptography, novel consensus mechanisms, and use of secure hardware such as Intel SGX. Coming back to why distributed ledgers, let's go a step back to see why. The nature of blockchain technology has got imaginations running wild. Because the idea can now be applied to any need for trustworthy record, blockchain has the potential to remove intermediaries and which can positively impact by reducing lead times for completing processes and workflows. It can reduce fraud since it's cryptographically secure and immutable, and a combination of these makes the return on investment of your blockchain project quick and high. By virtue of its properties, it can trust, it provides trust in an environment where multiple untrusted parties engage in a transaction, provides resilience and security for transactional systems enables revenue models and sources, and much, much more. Now, I'm, I'm going to quote something. I'm not sure it's going to be true, but that would be interesting. Speculations go that in 10 years, taxes will be collected on blockchain. Huh, I'm, I'm still counting which country that's going to be, but that would be interesting place that we could go into very soon. Let's take the case of finance industry. Blockchain technology allows for financial in institutions to create direct links between each other, avoiding correspondent banking. It can reduce, shorten the time uh, of trade, settlement, execution, clearing, and settlement. We will not go into the details and leave it for uh, Ramco to go over the details, but let's get into why in logistics domain. A good logistics solution should enable having the right item in the right quantity at the right time at the right place in the right price in the right condition to the right customer how easy was it how it was not easy even to say and it's a nightmare to make that work maintaining good supply chain visibility tracking shipments as they move around the world becomes difficult when multiple carriers, third-party logistics providers, and different modes are used to transport goods overseas and in, inside the country. According to KPMG, 40% of global manufacturers lack information or misdocumentation, and material visibility is not available across their supply bases. Poor visibility can, cause to, can lead to shipment delays, supply chain disruptions, revenue losses, and a lot more. To reduce business and supply chain risk associated with visibility or lack thereof, organizations are using collaborative processes. The most important and at times challenging concern is the need for greater innovations and technology advances while remaining budget conscious. Let's hear it for Ramco's Global Head of Supply Chain and Logistics Business Unit, Mr. Nawal Shabarwal, to share with us how they innovate and use blockchain in this industry to overcome the issues we just spoke about. Here you go, Nava. Thank you, Usha, for the informative presentation. Now that we know what blockchain is about. We will delve into what it can do in the world of logistics. What blockchain brings to logistics? 
The most important thing that blockchain brings to logistics is trust and creates an equal and fair play field for all the logistics service providers. It provides us the scope to reduce the layer of intermediary, which reduces cost, reduces time, and overall reduces waste. The trust is brought in by blockchain as it maintains data integrity, and we've heard a lot of it from Usha to the complete value chain. It fosters a sharing economy. What's the world of logistics all about? It's about movement of load. You have demand for capacity and you have supply of capacity. And this capacity is lying in different pockets. What blockchain can do is share this capacity to be used by the demand across the market. Now, since one is able to maintain data integrity to the complete chain, it simplifies claim settlements. The reality of the business is shipments will get damaged, shipments could get lost, shipments will get delayed. And what blockchain works on is a single version of the truth, data that it cannot be tampered and just simplifies claim settlements and reduces regulation and compliance costs. So blockchain is a win-win situation for logistics. Now, without getting into more details about what blockchain is and what it can do, we have selected a case of co-loading I will explain the use case to you, as well as show you a live demo of on how blockchain can help us in co-loading. Now, why co-loading? As I mentioned, it's about matching the load requirements which a shipper wants to move and an LSP and a logistics service provider and carrier which has the capacity. A number of studies have shown that capacity is not earning revenue to the extent that it could. The studies also show that there are a lot of empty run miles and a lot of shipments that are waiting for capacity. There are various numbers, but even if you look at the barest minimum, nearly 20 to 30 percent of capacity which is capable of earning revenue is not earning revenue. Whereas there are other logistics companies and shippers who have load with them and are not able to move goods in time while there is capacity available in their vicinity. Some studies have estimated this losses to be 160 billion. I personally feel it's much higher than that as it's the amount of data that's available today is just not adequate or not brought together to be able to measure the real loss. Now, this loss is only in terms of the capacity. The indirect and the collateral effect on delayed inventory, opportunity losses, and the inventory carrying cost that goes up because of higher inventory being carried, because of the delays, is phenomenally higher than this. Hence, if we are able to match demand and supply and utilize capacity that's available in the system, 
we are going to create a win-win situation for everyone. Logistics companies and carriers who carry capacity lose money as they are not able to fulfill capacity. The shippers, the manufacturers and the retailers who pay for the service and the capacity face delays and pay a higher cost because of underutilization of capacity. There is no one who is benefiting from this situation. The business challenge is simple. At the face of it, that's a load capacity mismatch. And what's missing today is our trustworthy channel for logistics companies and carriers to share the capacity. You have a number of brokers and intermediaries, but they carry the power and they dictate the rules. Now, this is a classic case where blockchain helps you in building trust and providing a fair playing field. Now, what's the use case about? There are logistics companies who get regular loads from their customers and they are constantly mapping up demand and supply of capacity. They sometimes have excess capacity, they sometimes are short of capacity. Now this use case is about these logistics companies forming a consortium. It's a digital consortium on the blockchain. Now this consortium is like a digital agreement between a seller and a buyer. The terms of which provide the business rules and the foundation of the change. So there are, you can set different sets of rules under which the consortium could work. As the terms of the agreement are executed during each transaction of sharing this capacity, the blocks are created, as Usha explained, as per the agreed business rules and the chain is constructed. Now, this gives a level playing field to the logistics providers who are assured that the capacity that's provided to us is true, the load that's provided to us is true, and once the capacity is committed, it is available to me for execution. Since data integrity in the supply chain is very high, if the first logistics provider is utilizing capacity of the second one, in case there is track and trace required, in case claims need to be settled, you have data integrity which is trustworthy and available to the complete consortium for use at any given point of time. Now, this consortium becomes important as it provides the single version of the truth. And this single version of the truth, truth is important when one realizes that global logistics comes down to multiple parties carrying out several agreements all the while which unfold in, on the basis of terms between the buyer and the seller. This platform thus allows each logistics company who carries capacity directly and indirectly to become a buyer and seller on equal terms with each other. What we'll do now is we will dive straight into the actual demonstration of this use case. Now, here is the use case. We are at the first logistics company and this logistics company is taking a booking and he has now got booking 
from his customer uh, for 256 kgs of load to be moved from point A to point B. And he is now going to check for his capacity. And he finds that he's got 1000 kg of capacity that's available. So he's planned this capacity and he realizes he's got 744 kgs of capacity that is now idle with him. He has no other orders available to him to service other orders. So what is he going to do? He is going to post this capacity to the blockchain. He's now posted it and we now move to the second logistics provider. Now the second provider is similarly like the first one is now looking at planning some of his loads to the same destination and looks for capacity and he finds that he does not have enough capacity to service this order now because he is on a consortium he then checks whether he could utilize the capacity from the blockchain capacity and he gets full visibility of all the capacities that are available he requests for it and a block is formed so he's gone and blocked the capacity and formed a block so the capacity now available is 594 kgs as the second LS, as the second LSP has utilized a part of that 744 kg. This is again repeated by the third provider who now gets down to the blockchain to be able to utilize the balanced 594 kgs. And he has the capacities available to him on the chain on a similar lines he now goes and blocks 594 kgs of capacity so we've seen out here how one logistics company which had 794 kgs of capacity 744 kgs of capacity available was able to tender this idle capacity through the blockchain to his consortium and how two other logistics companies who had demand for capacity were able to pick it up now while this is a simplistic straightforward case you could set multiple rules on the mode of transportation the commodity incompatibility, you could set rules on the travel time and make more complex rules within the consortium so that the matches are almost perfect to meet your requirements. Now, once the capacity is confirmed, the first logistics company who tendered the capacity he checks on what has happened to his capacity and he finds that the block have been formed the chain has been established he approves this capacity and we are showing you this approval online uh, as a manual execution this can be automated up as part of the rules He's approved this capacity and he's been able to utilize all his capacity that was available to him. Of course, we do not envisage that you're going to have an ideal utilization every time, but you will positively improve the utilization of the capacity and match demand and supply much better through the sharing of capacity through the blockchain consortium.
So what this platform helps you to do is share idle capacity, buy idle capacity, it is authentic as it's been directly extracted from the system through a set of rules established. And the vehicle availability or the capacity available can get ascertained as authentic as the system is directly extracting the data. What do we see in the future? A capacity sharing platform crowdsourced by logistics companies by forming consortiums which can be powered by Ramco. Now, while we work towards building blockchain solutions for customers, we have a digitalization tool which enables you to ascertain how digital is your logistics operation and your logistics company. I will now hand over back to Halley and to take up the digitalization tool with you. Thank you. Thanks, Nav. Uh, thanks for that presentation. Um, bear with me shortly, and I'm going to um, bring you back over to my screen. There we go. Um, and so to start things off, actually, I was going to uh, get the audience, that's you guys out there, to um, take part uh, in a quick poll. So um, Ramco has actually put together a quiz to help you determine your organization's digital readiness. Um, and so basically, if you would like to... Uh, if you'd like to, to use that poll or, or take advantage of that, um, just respond yes to the poll on your screen. Um, and, and Ramco will basically uh, send you the link to that, and you'll be able to uh, test your own organization's digital readiness. Um, so I'm going to give you a few seconds to play with that. Um, in the meantime, I have tons and tons of questions coming in, but keep them up. Um, if we're unable to get to your exact question during the Q&A, which is basically from now until the top of the hour, fear not, as uh, both Ramco and Microsoft will be able to respond to your questions offline afterwards. Um, we'll be able to, to email you directly to, to help you answer those. Um, so yeah, I'm going to give you a few more seconds to vote on that poll. All right, well, why don't I just leave the poll up, actually, um, and I'm going to jump straight into Q&A. So as I said, there's been tons and tons of questions come through. Um, and I guess I'm going to start with sort of a, a very broad one, but uh, I guess a very important one. And the question is really short, actually. It just says, is blockchain 100% secure? Um, but I was going to elaborate a little bit, because this is a question that I've heard a lot of people speak about as well. Um, and it comes down to mentions of you know, Bitcoin thefts from, from breaking into wallets and things like that. And so I guess I just wanted to hear a little bit more on the security level of blockchain. Um, Usha, could you, could you jump in there first uh, and, and sort of explain a little bit on, on you know, is blockchain 100% secure? Um. I am going to say the usual answer, it depends, but it also depends on how you structure what you want in there. Security depends for any application. Uh, architecture makes a very big difference in how an application can or cannot be secure. Um, depending on, will you put your social security number in there as it stands today? Most probably no, but each ledger and Microsoft by themselves are working through several security changes on how we could make it even better. We did speak about Cocoa Framework, and I can send you details if someone is interested. You could see how that can enhance the security, which is already pretty good. Depends on when there is a difference between security and privacy. So security by itself can be enhanced. Privacy depends on what you put in there. And there are several tools and ways in which we could make better. Naval, do you want to sh uh, share anything else on that? Uh, uh, so, Usha, I think you covered that, and it's about the architecture. And we work closely with partners like Microsoft, use their tools. We have our innovation lab, uh, which works on not just building the solution, 
but constantly working and making it more and more secure. Now, security is a process where you constantly learn and constantly upgrade. Uh, and you have to try and be ahead of the curve. Got it. Uh, I, I, th I think very fair answers there. Um, it, this kind of speaks to the security aspect of blockchain or perhaps the, the immutability of it. Um, and a very interesting sort of practical question that was raised is what happens if some of the data entered into a node is incorrect? How do you modify that if it's immutable? Um, back to Usha. Fantastic question, right? Um, so you write once and read many times and you want to edit it, you write an adjustment record. Isn't that how our accounting system has been working for so long? If you made a mistake, you add a correcting entry. You don't change the original record. And that's how blockchain works with that. Perfect. Um, uh, uh, Nav, did you want to add something to that? Or should I continue? No, you can continue. I think she's covered it. Fair, fair enough. Um, so, I mean, one of the other big areas that we're seeing a lot of debate in terms of blockchain is in terms of regulation. Um, and the question here just basically says, so what type of regulation is likely to put in place uh, so that the development of the technology takes place? In other words, um, what kind of regulation might drive blockchain's usage in logistics forward? Um, Nav, did you want to jump on that one first? Sure. So, uh, you know, standardization of data and standardization of protocols of exchange of data uh, will go a long way in helping and utilizing blockchain more effectively. Now, this has been the bane of the industry for a long, long time. And if consortiums uh, come together and start standardizing how data is exchanged, how protocols are maintained, how data is maintained it will go a long, long way utilizing blockchain. Now, would governments, should governments come into it? Uh, my personal answer would be no. Uh, it is the logistics industry which needs to set this right within itself. Uh, so that's the short answer to it. Perfect. Um, Usha, did you want to jump in as well? Um, I, I would just add one more thing, right? Acceptability makes a big difference. And when you call regulation, it depends on which country you're from, right? And which part, sometimes even different parts in the United States, different states in the United, uh, United States of America have different acceptance of blockchain. There, there are states where it is acceptable even to have securities on uh, blockchain. And um, I'm quoting Andrea here, and she did an awesome job uh, working in um, the Delaware to get those to be acceptable. So regulation is going to ta take time, and it's always going to be two steps forward, four steps backward. And I'm, I'm not even kidding. That's how it's going to be for a little while. Uh, standardization is different. Interoperability is different versus regulations. It, it's going to depend. But it also depends on how every country and state takes it. <laughs> got it, got it. Um, I, I guess sort of the themes of the, well, the two levels of questions I'm getting are what one of them is sort of, you know, when do we really need to pay attention to blockchain? And the other side of it is sort of, um, does blockchain, what does blo blockchain bring to the table that isn't already sort of in existence. So speaking to that first set of questions, an another challenge here that's been highlighted uh, and I thought very appropriate is one of the big problems in supply chains is having partners share data between them, just period. And so how is having, using a blockchain technology basically, how is that going to shift everyone's, uh, you know, all the partners in the supply chain, how is that going to shift their thinking? Um, Nav, did you want to jump on that one first? Sure. But so what blockchain, and I covered that in the presentation, is blockchain provides a fair play. Today in the logistics industry, people don't want to share data uh, because there are intermediaries sitting in between. 
uh, you are not sure of the rules of a game getting played there uh, you do not have complete visibility on how the match of demand and supply is taking place and blockchain provides a fair equal playing field to all the participants it also gives an equal opportunity for each one to buy and sell capacity in the example that i talked about and it's that trust that blockchain brings into play uh, and assurance that data integrity is maintained and it cannot be tampered with that will allow people to get on to this bandwagon of black blockchain and uh, overcome the problem of data sharing that currently exists in the industry usha did you want to chime in as well oh that was perfect thank you <laughs> Um, so I, I guess on the other side of that question, sort of as I was laying out, um, one of the things that, that I'm getting a lot of questions here on is why blockchain when you can sort of you can add some of the same levels of process uh, uh, to just existing ways of using data, basically. Um, Usha, did you want to tackle that one first? And, and I know the answer is probably going to be kind of similar to the other question, but I just wanted to hear sort of that angle as well. Certainly, if there is not a need or a necessity to use blockchain, please do not use blockchain. It's a very expensive, slow database. And I'm writing myself off here, but that is the truth. We did speak about the four pillars and there are some very special features that blockchain brings. And if you will not be using them, if you are not going to cross trust boundaries, if you are not going to be disintermediating, there are there are many questions we would ask ourselves. If you are not going to be doing that, please do not use blockchain. It's it's expensive, slow, and immature. For situations just, where it is not going to be useful, sir. So. <laughs> just, well, just to chime into what you mentioned there, I mean, the slowness of blockchain, the, the you know, in, in, is, is that going to hamper its progress at all? Is that going to prevent it from scaling to sort of the levels that we envision, uh, you know, sort of in, you see in the news and stuff? Haley, that's, that's actually a great question, right? So it depends on, so again, we were saying, which ledger do I use, right? It depends on what you want to do. If you want to r run Visa, the Visa type of transaction, 3,000 transactions a minute, uh, second is what I think, you will not run it on blockchain, uh, a Bitcoin, Bitcoin blockchain, Definitely not. It, it handles about seven. Uh, it takes about seven, right? So it depends what you want to do. But would you do it on something like Hyperledger or R3 or uh, Quorum or a different type of private chain? It can take it. But that is where, again, uh, I'm sorry to bring Microsoft again, but I am in love with this technology here. That is where things like enterprise smart contracts and Coco come in, which actually move the general ledgers which are available today to speeds that are so close to what a database can give you. For example, we had our CTO do a demo sometime a few months back, and it, we tracked about 1,600 transactions a second, which is like quite close to what database provides you. So technology is changing, and it is getting mature, and there are organizations like Microsoft who are making it even more palatable, even for this performance that is required for such uh, requirements. Um, Nav, did you did you have a take on that as well? So blockchain is an evolving technology as the technology companies like Microsoft are learning and as the usage goes up, some of the limitations that it has, I'm sure and confident that technology, once it finds the usage going up, will have solutions to overcome them. But to start with, if there are consortiums of 100, 200 companies that come together sharing capacity as an example and there are other use cases and those groups of companies are proving that blockchain is visible uh, if you can add more and more users into the consortium and work across the um, sorry, sorry Nav, you're, you're cutting out there a little bit. Um, could you repeat the last few words that you were just saying? I was saying that as the trust in blockchain increases, the size of the consortium will go up and improvements in technology will enable the speed and the capacities that are required to run it. 
Great. Um, so I just was going to sort of wrap up with a few sort of forward looking questions, I suppose. Um, well, I, I get another, another set of questions I've received here as well are, how can supply chain professionals wrap their heads around blockchain more, um, either through training or through, uh, you know, different resources? Um, are there any sort of points that, that you would point them at? Um, obviously, yourselves, both of you, uh, would be great resources. Um, uh, their email addresses are on your screens now, so feel free to drop them an email. But what are some of the other resources that supply chain professionals can turn to to better understand blockchain. Um, Usha, over to you first. Um, I'm going to pass this to Nav. He probably has a lot more information. But one of the things I would say is there is a lot of information on the web, and I would be happy to forward you some very good white papers, which goes into the issues and how you can deal with it, right? And where blockchain comes in and where it should, it's not going to help you. So I, I would be happy to send those resources, but Nav should have a better answer for that. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so uh, while you, you know, there's a lot of information that's available on the net and a lot of uh, technology providers like Microsoft, we look at learning blockchain by doing blockchain. Uh, we look forward, anyone who's interested in learning blockchain, come work with us. Let's experiment together and work on it. We have an innovation center in Singapore, which is focused on learning, building, learning, and it's a cycle. And we're ready to get in partners, logistics companies, logistics professionals. And we found that the best way of learning blockchain is by actually conceptualizing use cases, building them, and using them. And as you learn, you learn your lessons, you make mistakes, and you improve on it. So it's about theory that you pick up from the net, the practical part which we can enable you in the learning process. Perfect. Well, I wanted to thank everyone for tuning in to today's webinar. I wanted to thank both Usha and Nav for their contributions today. Uh, as I mentioned, their emails are on screen, but we will be sending out uh, the recording uh, hopefully as soon as tomorrow. Um, and with that, uh, I would like to thank you all and enjoy the rest of your days. Bye. Thank you.